Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today at the Cleveland Playhouse, and we're talking today with Mickey Braden. Thank you so much for meeting with us, Mickey. Oh, thank you. Welcome to Cleveland, by the way. Oh, thank you. I'm enjoying being here. I know you're a Detroit native. You're not from too far away from not here. Not too far. You're doing this great show, The Devil's Music, The Life, and Blues of Bessie Smith. Oh, yes. It's all about the blues. Oh, yes. What do you know about the blues? When did that first sort of strike you uh, as a young, young woman? Well, I was working in the clubs and trying to build my repertoire, and some people would bring me songs, and somebody brought me Sugar in My Bowl. Ooh. And I said, ooh, this is very interesting. You know, so I didn't really, I more, was more so jazz and okay. uh, things, but... I would add a few blues here and there to my, you know, my repertoire. So all of a sudden, <laughs> you got turned on to something that was, and the Bessie Smith style of blues. It's it's really interesting. What what drew you then to create this show? Because you're really co-creator, right? You you do the musical well, direction. You wrote some songs. Yes, Angelo Perra, Joe Brancato, and myself met for a couple of years to create this show, and it's been a godsend. Why Bessie Smith of all the people out there? What drew you to her? Um. I figured with lyrics like Sugar in My Bowl, mm -hmm. there had to be a story. <laughs> so when I brought it to Joe, I just told him I wanted to play her, and we just did some research, and the next thing I you know, bam, we Here got it. Here we are, it. and we you're got it. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> and you do have it. And it is, and there is a story. You say the story of her life. I yes. mean, it's really fascinating, isn't it, when the way she came up, and she became so successful Oh yes, as, as a black performer at, at a time when that was not the norm, was it? No, it wasn't, and she was like one of the highest paid, but she had dancers and comics and probably acrobats, and who knows what she had, you know, like the kids are doing today with right. all the big, massive um, people that they have working with them, you know? They get but, the big show. Yes, yes. She was earning what, like two thousand dollars a week yes. or something, which was, it was just unheard like, of. Which like, was probably about fifty thousand dollars now. A week. A week. <laughs> so she had an entourage. Yes. She wasn't always that way, though. She kind of grew up, and 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 she brought herself along. And talk about some of the places that that these the music was played in at those days, because it was really speakeasies, rent parties, drag balls. Well, they did, uh, they called it tough on black asses, excuse my language, but uh, they had tent shows all around uh, the country. Right. And that's where they did the Chitlin Circuit. Exactly. So they performed um, in these big tent shows. They did little, like you say, they had theaters that they could go to. Right. You know, they may not have been the best or the biggest or anything, but they were able to do a little bit of everything. So it would go from in the fields to the theaters. And this, this, performance takes place in a buffet flat, it was yes. called, right? Why, did it, why was it called buffet flat? Well, if you know what a buffet is, you can get a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, they meant really everyone was accepted. There was, there was a lot of sexuality going on, homosexuality. There was a lot of uh, different people mixing together. Well, it was mainly for African Americans that were traveling mm -hmm. because you could get a room and you could eat and everything else, but it was basically only for African American right. people. And the porters were the ones that, that had some money right on the trains. And oh, they, yes. they kind of stayed here, and it was for their entertainment. They could kick back, yes. and it was a safe space yes. to be who you wanted to be yes. and express who you wanted to express. <laughs> yes. But then she got huge, right? Started selling records. I mean, she sold. Oh, yes. I was amazed, 780 some thousand. Yes, records. her first recording yeah. sold that much, you know, and it was helped by the porters because they would travel all around. They would carry the records with them, they would sell them, right. you know, so that everybody was a part of trying to make everyone successful right. at that time. And, and you, you came out of the Detroit scene yourself yes. as a musician. I'm really fascinated that you, you're not just a, a performer. I think no. sometimes people <laughs> think, you know, somebody gave you the words and uh, it's Bessie Smith. It's, but this is as much you as it is Bessie <laughs> Smith, it sounds like, In right? many ways, because I was a gigging musician. Right. That was what I did mostly. I do more acting and the singing now, because um, mm -hmm. I hated feeling like a jukebox in the nightclubs. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's, it's been a great experience. And I'm so glad that I could even get it this close to home. Cleveland's been great. It's nice. It's, it's great having you here. And it's great that so many people are going to see this and learn. We have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here, oh, yes. as you know. Yes, and going over there, I've been there once. Have you? I was yes. going to say, because Bessie Smith, a big influence on people, like a Janis Joplin, yes. who, who we also had a performance here. Not too yes, I met ago. Mary just the other day. Oh, yeah, Mary yes. Bridget Davies. Yes. She's awesome. Yes, awesome. Yeah. 
So what's the show been like? Tell people what, they, what can they can expect when they, when they walk in and, and what's the scene like? Set the scene for it. Well, you're walking into a buffet flat. Everybody that walks in is African American and we are getting ready to have a ball with a woman that it does not hold anything back. <laughs> Nothing at all. So you're coming to have some fun because right. Bessie's coming in to have some fun. That's right. So that's what you expect to see. That's what you get. And she kind of controls the, the room. She was a big woman from what I understand, wasn't oh, she? Yeah. Six foot or so and she yeah, 200 she pounds. And mm. she, I, I read stories where she would go after the KKK or something and chase them out of the tent or... You, you <laughs> name it, whatever it was, she wasn't afraid of anything. And she set the tone and now that's you. Can't wait to see you in this role. Okay. Mickey, thank you so much for taking time to talk oh, with sure. us. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.